Okay, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. So far in our unit 3, we have seen about the first moment of area. Okay. So what is the need for this first moment of area? Why we do this? In order to find the centroid or center of gravity of a body, this is useful. The first moment of area is useful. Okay, we take, uh, it is from the concept of considering each particle of the body exert a force dw downwards. We, we combine all the forces to single force in order to find uh, the, the location of the single force, single resultant force, we take moment. So that moment is known as first moment of area. We consider the area, the first moment of area is useful in finding out the centroid or the center of gravity of a particular body. Okay, if you consider mass, we, we say mass center is center of gravity. The geometrical center, we call it as centroid. It may be centroid of an area or it may be centroid of a volume. It may be centroid of an area or sometimes if you consider volume, the centroid of the volume, we have to find out by, con by using the first moment of area. Okay. And uh, suppose if you have composite areas, the area which is of irregular shape, what is the procedure? We have to divide it into known areas. Small, small elements. Each element is of known area. I have told about this. This is being used in the new uh, technique called finite element approach where you are going to analyze stresses, strain or different mechanical properties of the body by discretizing, dividing the given body into small elements of known characters. So here, this is the initial point. You are in unit, you are in semester 2. You are studying about the division of particular body into known areas or known volumes. There, in the, when you come to finite element method, you will consider the element. It's not only representing the area or not only representing the volume. It will also possess some properties. For example, it will have degrees of freedom in one direction, degrees of freedom in two direction. Or we consider uh, the temperature distribution or any, any, any kind of analysis it can be. It can be load and its respective deformation or it can be heat and respective temperature distribution or velocity. Okay, any parameter can be analyzed, any, any parameter can be studied by considering the finite element approach. Okay, so this is the basic. What we are studying now is the basic for many of the courses which are going to study in the forthcoming semester. That way it is important. Okay. So we have seen the first moment of area earlier. Today we are going to see about second moment of area. Second moment of area. So where such a kind of situation arises and how it is useful, that we will see now. Gamma times 
times y gamma is the specific weight of the fluid, y is the distance, okay? And uh, the gamma times the gamma is the specific weight. Pressure, you know, the unit of the pressure is Pascal, or we can say Newton per meter square. The specific weight will be Newton per meter cube into y. Y is meter, so we get Newton per meter square. Okay. So the P pressure equals to specific weight times the distance y, along which the small the discrete uh, small element is considered. So for the differential element, the area of the differential element is given as dA, so which is which is obtained by pressure equals to force by area or stress in the, in the concept of stress or pressure. The pressure or stress equals to force by area because the unit of pressure is Newton per meter square. Newton is the unit of force and meter square unit of area. We can write pressure also equals to force by area from which we found the force equals to pressure times area. Pressure is rho gamma y times dA. So this, this moment of this force about the x-axis can be now find out. dM is y times dF. Force times the vertical distance. y times dF. And uh, dF is already gamma y square dA. We finally get it as moment equals to gamma times integral of y square dA for the whole plate. For single plate, this is gamma y square dA. So if you want to find out for the whole plate, the moment of the whole plate about the particular axis, about the x-axis, then we write it as gamma times integral of y square dA. So this integral of y square dA is now called as second moment of area. If you see first moment of area is y times dA, integral of y times dA. So you take, you again take a moment of that. Y times dA, you consider another another uh, another distance, multiply it by another perpendicular distance, so it becomes Y square dA. Okay. So Y times dA now, it becomes Y square dA, you are taking another moment. So that is why we call it as second moment of area. So first moment of area is Y times dA, Y square dA is the second moment of area. Uh, this is otherwise known as moment of inertia of the particular area about x axis and denoted as Ix. So this moment of inertia will be useful in finding many of the mechanical properties including the bending stress in, in the beams, bending stress in the object or any rigid body, deformable body. So which you, are, you will be going to study in your solid mechanics course. Okay. So that is why we need to find out the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. Okay. Understand? So, Y times dA is the first moment of area, Y square times dA is the second moment of area, which is useful in finding the mass or the moment of energy. Okay. So this, uh, you consider this small elemental area dA, differential area dA, the dIx moment of inertia will be Y square dA, about Y axis, about X axis is Y square dA, about y axis is x square dA. You remember, we will consider the opposite uh, distance, distance perpendicular to that. So, about y means it will be x square dA, about x means y square dA. So, for finding out the entire uh, area, we integrate it with respect to that area. So, Ix moment of inertia about x axis is given by y square dA, about y axis is integral of x square dA. Suppose if you consider the rectangular area, how we can find out uh, the moment of inertia by using the integral formula which you have seen in the last slide. So we divide the rectangular area into small small elements. So each element will have an area of dA which is equal to breadth times the strip thickness dy, b times dy. Okay. So dIx will be y square dA which is nothing but y square b d1. So if you integrate this uh, with respect to the total height, the strike is from, from a very height of 0 to h. So we integrate this differential area from 0 to h, you get b y square dy that is equals to 1 third of b h cube, b h cube. Okay. So the 
moment of inertia of a rectangular object, rectangular area, about x axis is given by bh cube by 3. bh cube by 3, where b is the breadth and h is the thickness. Similarly, we can find out moment of inertia for triangular object, circular, semicircular, also by integration. We are not going in detail about that. The another moment of inertia is known as polar moment of inertia. We take moment about the pole, okay, about the pole O, or we can say about z axis. Instead of x and y axis, we consider moment about the z axis. So this moment about the z axis is now known as polar moment of inertia. So this is given by DJO which is R square DA. R is the distance connecting the pole O and your position of your differential element DA. So this is R square DA. So for the entire area, we can differentiate with respect to the whole dimension of the area. This is R square DA. So this JO, JO is called polar moment of inertia. It is also equal to Ix plus Ix because this R is obtained by the coordinates x and y. So we can write r square equals to x square plus y square. So x, x square da plus y square da. x square da plus y square da will be the r square da. So polar moment of inertia is given by r square da which is equals to x square plus y square da of the particular area. Now we will see another parameter radius of gyration. So the radius of gyration is the location of the mass. We find out location of the particular area or location of the particular mass with respect to the axis of our interest. Okay. So the distribution of the mass is given by this radius of gyration. So consider the area whose, whose moment of inertia is Ix with respect to its axis. Now we, 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 we can concentrate area into small strips like this. The whole area is to be concentrated in this strip which is located at a distance of kx from x-axis. Okay. So we, we can find out this ix now equals to like y here we have kx, kx square times a. Moment of inertia of this strip will be kx square times a. Solving for kx, kx will be given the root of moment of inertia divided by area. Okay. So this is known as radius of variation of that area with respect to x axis. Similarly, we can find out radius of variation with respect to y axis also which is given by i y by a. So radius of variation gives us the distribution of area with respect to the, area, the axis of interest. If it is from x axis, how much, where it is distributed, okay, where the mass is distributed or area is distributed. So this will be useful in finding out the moment of inertia and mass moment of inertia later. Okay. Suppose if we design a flywheel, so the flywheel design depends on your mass moment of inertia. So how much mass moment of inertia it will have accordingly, the dimension of the flywheel will be varying. Okay. The, what is the purpose of a flywheel? Have you heard about the flywheel? What is the purpose? It stores energy in the engine. The energy developed in the engine in all the four strokes may not be same. Sometimes energy is needed by the engine, sometimes energy is uh, developed more than sufficient. Okay. So the excess energy developed in the engine will be absorbed by the flywheel. It stores the flywheel wherever there is a need for energy, deficit energy, it supplies the, supplies the energy. So flywheel as it stores energy, it will run faster and as it releases energy, it will run slow. Okay. So the flywheel is used to absorb the energy from the engine. So this flywheel design needs an important parameter which is mass moment of inertia or moment of inertia. This mass, mass moment of inertia is given by mk square. So mass and k is the radius of variation. So the distribution of that mass from our axis of interest is given by the radius of variation. That is how radius of variation is important. Okay. So if from x axis it is ix by k and y axis is iy by k to the root. Suppose if you have a rectangular area like this, using the formula Ix by A, Ix is 
dsq by 3 area is breadth times height we can say kx square equals to h square by 3 or kx equal to h by 2 for rectangle area And now we will see about the two, uh, the important theorem called parallel axis theorem. Okay. Suppose, so far we have find the moment of inertia about x axis, about y axis. Suppose if you consider another axis parallel to x axis and y axis, we need to find out moment of inertia about that parallel axis, then we will go for parallel axis theorem. Okay, so the parallel axis theorem is useful in finding the moment of inertia about any axis which is parallel to the reference axis. X, it may be X or Y. Okay, so any axis like you remember, we have found the force, resultant force about uh, X and Y axis, the resultant force about specified any specified axis, moment about particular axis, moment about another specified axis, we did the same uh, Okay, exercises we did for forces and moment. So we are following it for our mass moment of inertia also. Okay. We may have to find out moment of inertia with respect to any specified axis. So how will you find out moment of inertia with respect to any specified axis? For example, we need to find out moment of inertia about already we found moment of inertia about A A dash. Okay. Now we need to find out moment of inertia about this axis B B dash. B B dash is the axis that passes through the centroid of our body given. Okay. Or we call it a centroidal axis. Or we name it as neutral axis also. Neutral axis. Axis which passes through the centroid of our body. Okay. So we have to find out moment of inertia about this centroidal axis. For that we use the parallel axis theorem. So about A A this a a dash is y square dA, the formula which we already derived, integral of y square dA. Now we consider b b dash parallel to a a dash. So this axis is known as centroidal axis. The distance of distance of uh, b b dash from a is d, a a dash is d. And the uh, distance of uh, your uh, elemental area is given as y dash. So the total distance of elemental area from A A dash is y dash plus t. Okay. So we substitute this y y dash formula, y y dash in your y in the first formula, first equation. We get the equation change like this. So we expand it y dash square plus t square plus 2 y dash t times d a is the expanded uh, integral. So the first part y dash square d a we call it as moment of inertia about the centroidal axis y dash square d a is similar to this formula. So this y dash square d a is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis and this one moment about y dash this if you consider from here it will be 0, this y dash will be 0 for the centroid part part. The third wicket d square. So we finally write this equation as the first integral is the as I told you, set moment of about the centroid axis. Second integral represent first moment of area, first moment of area with respect to b b dash. Since C is on the axis itself, the second integral part will become 0. And finally, we get this written as i bar plus a t squares. i bar refers to moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. Centroid is given, centroid is given as x bar y bar. Is it not? Centroid, the location of centroid is given as x bar y bar. In the same way, moment of inertia about the centroidal axis is given as i bar. Second one is zero because this is the first moment of area. Y, y bar dash d a. Okay, so this uh, here this moment of area about b. About b as it passing through the centroid it will become zero. So 
that we can finally say that moment of inertia i of an area with respect to given a a dash is equal to moment of inertia of the centered axis plus product of the area times distance between the two axes distance between the two axes so we will apply this for finding out the moment of inertia of composite areas this will be generally useful if the area is very complex like like how we did for centroid centroid if you are given an area we split it into many elements the same approach we do for finding out the moment of inertia also if you are given a composite area in that case we will be using this uh, parallel axis theorem we have to use the parallel axis theorem we will see the example now so, so these are the areas which are obtained by integral okay the areas and their moment of inertia moment of inertia of the rectangle about the centroidal x axis is bh cube by 12 about the centroidal axis okay about the x axis is bh cube by 3 centroidal axis is bh cube by 12 similarly about centroidal y axis is b cube h by 12 and similarly this one this is polar moment of uh, inertia which is ix plus iy similarly for triangle 1 by 36 bh cube or bh cube by 12 for circle 1 by 4 pi r power 4 okay and for uh, polar moment of inertia half pi r semi circle and quarter circle so these are the values obtained by in the integration process which we have already shown for rectangular area the standard table we can remember that you should for uh, the areas which we have to now we apply this in a composite area so we have a rectangular plate with a semi circular groove in it semi circular hole okay hole okay so we have to split it into two areas rectangular and semi circular so we have to find out the moment of inertia about x axis don't it come ha so we split it into two areas rectangular circle okay so rectangle minus so the moment of inertia of the rectangle minus moment of inertia of the circle will give you the final moment of inertia so how to find out moment of inertia of the circle so we use the just formula 1/3 bh cube okay from about x axis only so it is 1/3 of bh cube B is 240 and H is 120. We get it as 138.246 millimeter per four. You remember, moment of moment generally is in newton meters. Four is in newton, moment in newton meters. But moment of inertia will be meter per four or millimeters per four. Moment of inertia. Okay. So <coughs> moment of inertia of the area. Suppose if you go for moment of inertia. mass moment of inertia that is different it will be in kg meter square that we will see later in the same unit we will cover that mass moment of inertia also so this is moment of inertia or we call it area moment of inertia we can call it as area moment of inertia so area moment of inertia is given as millimeter per four in the unit of area moment of inertia is millimeter per four or meter per four okay so you will get it as 138.246 millimeter per four. now we have to find out for half circle the centroid of the half circle is different from centroid of your rectangle so we have to use parallax theorem here we have to use the parallax theorem so we have to find out the mass moment of inertia moment of inertia about the centroid axis okay. so this is the position of centroid how will you find out the centroid Use the formula. Okay, four four r by three pi. Okay, four r by three pi or four by three r by pi. Okay, so four the same. So we found the centroid as thirty eight point two. Centroid from the flat surface. Always remember, centroid of the particular quarter circle or half circle is obtained from the flat surface of that quarter circle or half circle. So from the flat surface, this distance is centroid. Is given by 4r by 3 pi. So the remaining distance we have to subtract from 120. 
that is okay 81.8 <coughs> now we have to take moment of half circle about a a a is the base so using the formula semi circle formula we get it as like this then the area of the half circle pi r square by 2 then using parallax theorem about the axis centroidal axis is given as i x bar equals to i a a minus a a so we are putting it in the other side so we get moment of inertia about the centroidal axis okay. so we have we can obtain by subtracting
in finding the bending stress, torsional stress, more type of forces are there. Axial force for our body. If there is a body, we apply force parallel to the axis. Parallel to the axis on the axial force on the Perpendicular to the axis on the radial force. Radial force. Radial force on the torsion. Around the around the radius, about the radius program, yeah, that is called torsion. For a twist, for a shaft on the or pokam put in the protect panamana and now twist off. So that's the torsion zone, torsional force. Other pole for point load act on a bending, bending stress. So the bending stress, torsional stress is not calculated for the weight of the door act on the bending of the So moment of inertia for rectangular area is about x axis of the centroidal axis. About the x axis of the BHS cube. Sir, now we have a moment of inertia y square dA. Moment of inertia y square dA. Centra is called y dA. So, on the concept of y dA and y square dA. That's why we got the formula. So, parallel axis theorem, we use that i axis y square dA plus a d square. And the distance of the product is used. So we have to find out moment of each area, moment of inertia of each area about x axis. About x axis of the front. So rectangle we have the formula about x axis as bhq by 3. bhq by 3. Whereas the half circle, the formula is only from the flat surface. Only from flat surface. Either we can assume this a a. Moment of inertia about AA is given by pi r power 4 by A. Then about the centroidal axis we calculate. About the centroidal axis using parallel axis zero, Ix bar. Okay. Is calculated. Then about the x axis we calculate. About the x axis. So in given the AB square, in the distance we First AA is Final Ix of the rectangle minus Ix of the circle will give you Ix of the composite area. Okay? Check down.
they have the formula, we directly use the formula. So no need to use, use the parallax theorem here. Okay. Whereas for semicircle, the semicircle's flat surface is looking upwards. Okay. And uh, your x axis, x axis is here. You cannot even use parallax theorem between, between the two, the centered axis and x axis. So first we use parallax theorem between a a dash and x dash. First we use parallax theorem between a a dash and x dash to find out moment of inertia about centered axis. Centered axis is formed on the So we find out moment of inertia about the centered axis first. Then we find out using parallax theorem the moment of inertia about x axis. So we, we use two steps. We apply parallax theorem twice for semicircle since your semicircle is looking upwards. The flat surface of semicircle is looking upwards, we do like that. Okay. So we do it in two steps. First we find out moment of inertia about centered axis. To find moment of inertia of the centered axis, we consider moment of inertia about A A dash. Consider moment of inertia about A A dash and find apply the parallax there. Apply the parallax there. Third rectangle 
27 mm below x axis like that ok so we have to consider parallel axis there i x i x will be i x dash centroidal axis plus a d square that dash a a square a b square a c square like that we have to proceed use the parallel axis there so if you consider the first area this is a ok and the, this is our neutral axis, centroidal axis. 1, 1 dash is the centroidal axis. So, Ix for first area will be moment of inertia about the centroidal axis plus area of the rectangle into distance of the centroid from your x, from x axis. So, Bd cube by 12 or Bh cube by 12. Bd or H you can use. B d cube by 12 times B into D is the area, A is this is a square. Okay. So I get the answer as 105408. One lakh. Okay. So this this one is for first area. So we consider the area and its distance from x axis, apply parallax theorem and find out. For area 2, if you consider for area 2, area 2 is having a center axis. Coincide with the x-axis, the axis which is around which we have to find out. Okay. So your b is 0, distance from the x-axis to set axis is 0. So we get directly from the formula b d q by 12 the ix for area 2. Area 3, this is distance c and the area length is 48 and width is 6. So I 3 3 B D Q by 12 formula B into D A C square. So we get the moment of inertia about the x axis using parallel axis theorem. Okay. Now you sum up all the moment of inertia, we get the final moment of inertia. Okay. So it's a composite area. It's only addition, no subtraction is here.
central axis for first rectangle is 1 1 dash 1. Okay. So, moment of inertia about the central axis for rectangle is BD cube by 12. About the base is BD cube by 3. About the base. In the previous problem, we will use the formula BD cube by 3. Okay. So, that is about the base. Right. 